these are this is not an exhaustive list, but these are some of the internationally recognized carbon standards. Um, specifically, the, the biggest ones is, is VERA, under the Verified Carbon Standard, and then also Gold Standard, uh, which really focus on, focuses on sustainable development projects as a whole and also measuring co-benefits alongside. Um, some of you may be familiar with the Clean Development Mechanism. This was a system that was set up under the Kyoto Protocol, protocol so again, in the early 2000s. And this was a mechanism that really enabled these projects to come online in developing countries through the support of Annex One parties. And if you're from Australia, um, you will maybe be familiar with the Emissions Reduction Fund, and this is Australia's um, mechanism that, that helps to support commitments under the Paris Agreement. And then we have standalone standards that can support these projects, and they really focus on co-benefits and ensuring environmental and social and economic outcomes for a project outside of the carbon. So CCBS label, which you, you may see often with nature-based projects, is really ensuring that local communities are engaged with the project, specifically when we're looking at, let's say, projects in South America and understanding the engagement with indigenous communities and ensuring that they're part of that process, they're, they're part of that um, decision-making process and they are being considered when the project is being deployed. So now we'll just jump into some of the different technologies and project types that um, the carbon offset market provides. And we separate these into our nature-based solutions and then our clean energy and community projects. Nature-based, we'll dive into further in a second, but really they have a higher carbon sequestration potential. So, um, you know, whether it's a, a removals project or we're looking at forest protection, you know, mature trees are still retaining carbon um, in their trunks. And then we have our clean energy and community projects. So we wanna be transitioning all fossil fuels and we still wanna be supporting a um, market that, that, that really focuses on this. And then we have community projects, which, you know, improve the livelihoods of local communities and, and also have a, several co-benefits that go along with them. So things like cook stoves and water filters. Nature-based, this has become a hot topic in um, recent months and, you know, I think a lot of organizations are starting to recognize the, um, the value that ecosystem, our fragile ecosystems play in, in, in the, um, you know, the, the nexus of our universe. So, so really just breaking it down, we have our, our Red Plus projects, and this is focused on forest protections or maybe mangrove protection or um, peatlands or wetlands. And that's really ensuring that carbon sinks remain intact. So um, ensuring that we're really still protecting those ecosystems that, that are so valuable to, to us as in society. And then another one is sustainable agriculture, and this is around changing land management practices. So things like soil carbon or the way that we, you know, can improve productivity on our land. On our land, and this has a higher carbon sequestration potential. So whereas you know forest protection is more around pr protection, um, sustainable agriculture and then afforestation, reforestation, and improved forest management does. Um, contribute more to, towards carbon sequestration. So um, leading into that, we have our avoided emissions versus carbon removals. So avoided emissions is obviously avoiding a, um, the release of additional greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere. So things like a renewable energy project or a forest protection project in order to conserve um, forests instead of cutting down trees and releasing um, CO2 into the atmosphere. And then our carbon removal is more around, um, we can divide that into our biological and our technological types. And that's really sequestering carbon from the atmosphere and in, you know, at different rates, depending on the, you know, the type of technology and the type of method that we look at. And as we move towards a net zero future, this will become more and more, um, the increase in demand will become more and more for this, but we'll touch on that in a second. So 
again, breaking it down even further, I um, hope this is not too much detail for everyone, but um, we have our natural carbon removal approaches. And these are readily available in the market right now. So project afforestation, reforestation projects, we're getting a lot of biochar and soil carbon and other land use projects. And this is really, they're less costly to implement and manage. Um, again, closer to deployment and the fact that they are already online and there is more supply coming online, and but they are more vulnerable to reversal. So we would consider them more of as a short-lived short -lived removal, and there is more risk that carbon could be leaked from these projects in the long term. Then we have our combined technologies, which is natural and technological. And again, they fall, fall more towards the technological side where there is a lot of research and development still required for these projects. These types of offsets are very scarce in the market and they do have a much higher price tag. So we really look at, the, again, as we look at net zero, we're looking at these types of solutions as a more longer term strategy as, you know, as we can unlock more opportunity for these projects to, to happen. And